uh, lately, uh, well, here's what I think, you know, and so you can hear it from them. So my faith, my voice, I want to say .com or .org. If somebody you know, looks it up, just let us know. And may I ask finally, and watch their deeds. Watch their deeds. I can tell you anything that I need. Watch how I act. Watch their deeds. That will either affirm or betray. Watch their deeds. Okay. All right. Um, the, the, the question here, uh, by the way, I, I, I actually want to add just a, a little something there because I think that, uh, well, let me introduce my question. I can take up, hit two birds with one stone. It's addressed to me, so I guess uh, I, I'll try and answer it unless somebody think I'm just avoiding questions here. Um, do you have a vision for Muslim future in the United States? Um, yes, I do, but uh, my, my vision for Islam in the United States is not a vision that focuses only on Muslims. Uh, I really do think that as, as, as a country, uh, uh, almost as an experiment, uh, we are at, a, at, a, at another critical juncture in our history uh, as a nation. And one of the things that, 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 that concerns me about the present moment is that our sort of national identity uh, is ever so subtly changing. And we are, in a sense, forgetting what it means for us to be Americans. And I don't mean that um, in any kind of expression of patriotism to any particular government or administration, but I'm talking about the meaning of what it means uh, to be American. And part of that meaning is that we, as a nation, are a negotiated identity. That is that we get together, we agree, we disagree, we compromise, we dig in, we have a process of negotiating who we are. And that process, unlike other countries in the world, can produce multiple possibilities of equal authenticity. Uh, that's what America was always meant to be. I mean, going all the way back to the founding fathers, all right, people like Benjamin Franklin said, that if the Mufti of Constantinople were to send an emissary here to teach the religion of Muhammad, he would find a pulpit waiting for him. All right? And if Islam proves to be not worthy in the sight of the American people, then it will be marginalized and it will die the death of so many other ideologies that Americans saw to be unfit. That's who we are from our inception. You know, if, 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 if we were France, we would never be sitting around trying to decide, hmm, let's see, what language are we going to speak as our national language? <laughs> All right? Um, we had to decide that as Americans. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that, you know, the present moment is one in which there are forces out there that are trying to get Americans to stop the process of negotiating in terms of who we are of insisting that their understanding of what it means to be American is the understanding and everybody else, without negotiation, simply has to conform to that. If that movement is successful, we will all be impoverished in this country, all of us. And so my future, my vision for America is one in which Muslims make their contribution to sustaining the negotiated character of the American project, <coughs> right? Now, and I say that to come back to this question of, you know, why don't Muslims speak out? I mean, I, I, I too, uh, you know, have my problems with why do I have to answer for, you know, other Muslims? I, 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 but I think that to some extent, um, you know, that, that's human nature. But beyond that, I think that sometimes we have to question the question. All right? Because the question oftentimes contains lots of assumptions all right, that are designed to lead to certain ends. In other words, um, I, I heard something and uh, it really struck me because of who I heard it from. I heard it from uh, Jim Brown, the football player. If anybody knows about Jim Brown, he's a very activist. Uh, very much into promoting the interests, particularly of, of the black, but not exclusively the black community. And I heard him say once, he said, you know, people talk about Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. He said, Jackie Robinson didn't break the color barrier. 
Branch Rickey broke the color barrier. Branch Rickey was the white owner of the baseball team that hired Jackie Robinson. All right? And my point here is simply this. Jackie Robinson lived in a time of abject racial discrimination against black people in America. You know, to say, well, why aren't more white people speaking out is to do a great disservice to people like Branch Rickey. There were millions of decent white people who were doing what they could do. The mere fact that they weren't able at that moment to overturn the system should not be construed to be, well, they just don't care. Right? Muslims are speaking out all the time. And I think the assumption that we can only know when Muslims are speaking out, when there are no more extremists, no more idiots, all right, uh, no more contorted peoples left in the Muslim community, I think that's a very unfair criterion. It would be unfair for America. It's unfair for Islam. All right? And I think that this kind of, of, of fair-mindedness is a part of what we have to bring back to our country and to our, our, our social existence I mean, a, a, as a nation. Right? And, and we have to understand if we don't do it, then we will pay the price for that. And, and today it's the Muslims. We don't know who it's going to be tomorrow. Right? So that's my spiel. All right. Next question. Uh, the, the, the question is entitled for non-indigenous uh, changes your experience in your self-concept post 9-11. I mean, and how, what kinds of changes have uh, occurred in terms of your self-understanding, your understanding of yourself uh, post 9-11? Non-indigenous? Yeah, well, all yes. indigenous. Well, I'm just... No, no, I know what they mean. But, yeah. all right. I guess they were the closest to them, but... I, I'm going to take my... Uh, my authority here and say anybody can answer that. Changes? In self-perception, if, if no one wants to. Well, I've got an answer, but I already said something about yeah. it. No, nah, what changes? No, I mean, the, the, the change and, and who I am and who I thought I was or who I think I am, no, there wasn't any changes. I didn't go run, run up to the young man who had to sign and ask him, hey, did you go to the last Klan meeting? I mean, no. No, who I am, I've been, I've been identified who I am. I'm cool with who I am. I think the, 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 maybe the biggest change for a lot of Muslim communities has been the need to, as Chris was talking about, um, uh, sort of get people to know who we are. And I think that's what this, is, this forum is about and, and many similar type forums, open houses at mosques and things like that. I think a lot of Muslims recognize that um, sort of being comfortable in day-to-day in -day life and and not explaining to people what Islam is and what your faith is about, um, it's, it's, it's not going to be enough. You have to, you have to make yourself uh, visible so that people can understand who you are and can um, gain an understanding. And with knowledge, uh, ignorance can be dispelled. Uh, I think that's, that's sort of a lot of what we're going through in this process and, and the need to engage the dominant community more. Uh, I think that was something that we all learned from 9-11. Well, I, I mean, I guess for me, actually, I did go through a lot of changes. I became Muslim three months before 9-11. And uh, so I was like this, you know, really wide-eyed, happy convert. Um, <coughs> and uh, it just rocked my boat. I was like, what, what did I join? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it wasn't really that I doubted Islam, you know, I, my faith in Islam was still there, but it was kind of like, you know, I didn't know what a Sunni or a Shia was when I became Muslim, let alone any other differences, and um, like who Osama bin Laden was, but I, I saw him on TV and he looked like a very pious Muslim to me that had a big beard and a turban, and I was like, this is the type of person that we, shouldn't I be listening to him? And it was, it, it was, um, so for me 9-11 was a catalyst to, uh, really, really put me on a path of searching. And, and I'm still on that path, so 10 years later, um, trying to figure it out. 
Yeah, I mean, I had already alluded a little bit how it changed, but I mean, if you're saying in my identity, well, one thing I'll say in, in terms of being an American, you know, I've always been a, a very patriotic and very strong American to the point where, you know, my heritage is actually, you know, my parents are from India and Pakistan, and uh, we would make trips out to Pakistan from time to time, and uh, I would invariably get into very heated arguments with my cousins all the time because, you know, it's, it's just, it's like an uh, international hobby. It's not just Pakistan. It's all over the place. I mean, it's not just Muslim countries. It's all over the place. You go anywhere, whatever. You know, why is America doing this? Why is America doing that? Why is America? And of course, when we're here, we have the right as Americans to critique our own, you know, country. But nobody else has that right, right? You know, that's the point. That's how you feel. And so I was like, you, you guys don't know what the heck you're talking about. You wouldn't even be around if we weren't here. You know, like that kind of thing. You know, so I, I get into these types of things. Now, after 9-11 happened, you know, uh, and all this stuff starts, you know, they start hearing all these stories about what's happening to Muslims in America and all this kind of stuff. You know, I, I have to play that role of, you know, defending America, you know, uh, while, you know, things are still happening to us here. They really are, you know. We really are being targeted, but now I still, uh, play that role. But the other thing is it's, it's, it's made me quite indignant to see some of the stuff that's going on, you know. To, to have somebody try to take ownership of America when they don't own America, I am part of that ownership. This is my country, okay. So how dare you? You know, you can leave. You go back to your country, wherever that was. All right, seriously. I mean, you know, don't even, don't even try it. So that's how I feel. And really, you know, my waking hours, and I can tell you, everybody on this panel right now, I know everybody's working on that. that that's one way that we're a little bit probably different than, say, people of other faith right now, is because for self-preservation, we want to stay here. It's not like I want to pick up and leave or take my family somewhere else or whatnot. This is our country. So we want to preserve what we believe America is. So we are working towards that. So why are we getting more politically active? You're going to hear people telling you, oh, Muslims are getting more politically active because they want to take over the country. Well, first of all, we're not doing a very good job of that, are we? You know? <laughs> so secondly, the reason we're getting more politically active, and make no, you know, there's, have no doubt about this, is for self-defense. That is, that's, that right now, that's right. Obviously, we have positive things to contribute, but it is self-defense because I do not want to see some of those people that are saying some of that stuff be elected into office. Unfortunately, some of them were. And, and I fear for my daughter. I really fear for, you know, our, our, my community. And that it's just we're steps away. We're steps away from being interned. And if you don't believe it, go read your history again. Um, I just wanted to add one, one okay, last quick thing. Okay, I'll, I'll let you add this last yeah. note, but this will have to be the absolute last note. 30 seconds, no more, because we have been given notice that we have to uh, okay. end. Okay, uh, 1920s Germany also elected, uh, unemployment was ha high, and it, they did elect, um, you know, the, the, the fascist type voices. So it's interesting, this Muslim community is the bridge between America and the Muslim world. It, I was in Saudi Arabia about a month ago, and um, an Egyptian minister saw me at the airport and somehow knew right away that I was American and asked me, um, what is this about the Quran burning? What's going on there? And, uh, you know, I, I kind of passed it off as just some one, one nut, you know, in, in, in the, you know, some part of the country. He said, well, why, why do these Americans, they hate Islam? And I said, oh, my gosh, you know, you're doing the same thing. You know, uh, you're generalizing about an entire country based on the actions of one man. Um, and I think that's the beauty of the Muslim um, population here in this country is that they can explain to the Muslim world that indeed America is a great place to live and, and can be, uh, as Dr. Jackson, a negotiated identity that we can all be a part of. <coughs> and indeed, f for America, we, we can explain that Islam is also a, a great religion that can be a, a, cont a contributor to peace and understanding in the world. On that note, I'd like to thank all of our panelists and thank all of you for coming. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.